Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? That's not something about the central array. I apologize. It's about where you put the EA on in relation to the IR. It's about the IR position. <coughs> Not central ray, I apologize. So it's more like here? Yeah. Point five inches in front. These are so obscure, I always have to check my notes too when I'm teaching these. You just don't do these anymore. That's a Schuler method we're talking about here. We're gonna have a law method as well. We do one or the other, by the way. We don't do both. We're going to do either Schuler or Law. We always do the AP axial, but we choose between Schuler and Law. It's a tech preference, whichever way you want to do it. Which Me personally, say, I like this one better. So because you're the Law? The Law, even though it looks nice, you have to utilize like head tilt and all that kind of stuff. It's a little more difficult. I like this is a little easier overall, personally. Is the previous one centered? Previous one centered? That was like three inches above the nasion. Remember, because we were saying it was like the, it was like the towns, but the blinking wasn't helping. All right, so since ray guys, 25 to 30 degrees caw dad once again. We're back to the angling caw dad, not cephalic anymore. And we're entering 0.5 inches anterior and two inches superior to the upside EAM, which that does match with the picture now. 0.5 inches anterior, 2 inches superior to the upside EA ohm. So that's a side that's away from the IR right there. We'll make one exposure with the mouth closed, starting with the closed x-ray. Another made with the mouth open, and we're going to do both. Those always come in a pair. Anytime we do TMJs, you always do them in a pair. Closed versus open mouth. Small areas, you're going to use that 8x10 collimation. Check that small little joint. So you don't need the whole head on there. The more skull you have on there, the less you're going to see those TMJs. So if you want to be like a super tech and get that really tiny square, it's going to really make it pop and look a lot better. As I said, I've only done these one time in my entire career. Did you pull out your pocketbook? I did. I remember how we do it. Peace, love. No. Okay. What? You know, when you come late with food, you, might, you need to at least bring me something. <laughs> okay. I, that's, that's, that I thought that was part of the contract when you signed on to the school. <laughs> you're going to show up late with food, you got to bring samples for the teacher. It's a really fine print. You're like, so you're telling me I can be late in the morning? Huh? <laughs> 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 no. 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 All right, so what's the stars of our show, guys? Once again, TMJs, open versus closed. We are on this one going to do both sides, left and right, for comparison views. So different from the man bowl where we just look at the side of interest. On TMJs, we're doing these in pairs once again. So both sides, both open and closed. So it's four x-rays on this one view here, four x-rays. Left and right closed, left and right open. Now what do we want to see? We do need to see that TMJ anterior to the EAM, otherwise we're not going to get a good enough look at it. And you can already see it's already hard enough to see as is. There's only a closed mouth view. There's the condyle going to the joints. For open mouth, I think I have that on the next page, but you'll see how it will go forward when we open the mouth. So condyle should be in the mandibular fossa for closed mouth. Condyle should be inferior to the articular tubicle for open mouth. I do have a picture of that coming up. Make sure you can tell the difference between the open versus closed mouth. It's only like banging drums up there. What's going on? Is that frame in the EM? Uh, right here? Mm -hmm. Yes. What? So then, is that the mastoids uh, air cells or sinus air cells? You can't really see them too good, but they'd be like around here. So, like inferior to the uh, EAM? What's inferior to the air cells? The, the, right there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's behave him for now. You're not going to 
have your daddy voice again? <laughs> I have to. All right, guys, a great picture to take a picture of right there, guys, is that Schuler method showing you the open versus closed mouth, also in your book, be able to identify closed versus open on an x-ray. You will see that again. So closed mouth, we're in the joint. Open mouth, you'll see the condyle goes anterior to the joint. What's the lower arrow pointing to on the left side? That's a good question. It looks like it's... I mean, this is temporal bone coming down right here. This is mandibular. It says it's the mandibular condyle side away from the IR. That's why it's... Is that what the book says? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. Mandibular condyle away from the IR? Yes. I'm not sure why they put a arrow there on that, but okay. So, so where, where are they? Because I don't see them. Where are what? Yes, nice guideline yeah, no. there. On that one, though. On this one? Mm -hmm. Look at the arrows. The condyle is anterior to the fossa. Yeah, it's a closed mouth. It's up in the joint, like you see right here. When you open the mouth, also look at the teeth. You can kind of tell. Mm -hmm. When you no, open the mouth, anterior. it goes anterior. Now, if they were super tech and collimated down, you're not going to see the teeth. But if you can see the teeth, yeah, look, look to that as well. It helps you out. Mr. Yeah. Nutty? Yeah. Um, hypothetically, let's say on a hot spot you said uh, with the open mouth you identify the TMJ instead of the condo, the condyle. condyle. Um, you want us to do the space. The space. Yes. What? No, huh? It's not. It isn't. But I do want y'all to like tell a difference. Like let's say between the two. You're probably going to see these side by side, not the same pictures, to be able to identify open versus closed mouth. Oh, not the, not the previous one? Right. Not, not the previous one, sir? We're both more focused on our bacon sandwich than these TMJs. I mean, we're using our TMJs to chew this bacon sandwich. Exactly. Did you fix this? Huh? No, but it's behaving right now, so let's see what we can get done. <laughs> All right, the other view, and once again, you have the choice of Schuler versus Law. I personally prefer Schuler because there's less work on it. But Law is the other way that we can do the open and closed mouth view while you want to that axiolateral position. So upright, we're going to do an open and closed mouth view. We're going to do both sides once again. Therefore, with Law, we also do four exposures, just like Schuler. We're going to center half an inch into the EAM. Resting the cheek against the gray device, and we're going to rotate the head 15 degrees, which is why I don't like doing this one, because the other one just is a true lateral, a little bit easier. But for law, we're going to rotate the head 15 degrees. That's a big point to remember. Rotate the head 15 degrees. Utilize also a 15 degree caudad angle. So tilt combined with angulation. Where's the tilt? Y'all should not have done this in the lab. It's not on the list. It's kind of similar to the manual, though. So it's an axial lateral. This is for TMJs. <coughs> What'd you say, Jay? I'm sorry. And you said it's a combination of tilt and angulation? Yes, yeah, so we're tilting the head 15 degrees. We're also angling the two 15 degrees. We're, we're tilting, not we're rotating? Tilting. Rotate. rotate, I'm sorry. Okay. Rotate. Okay, so tilt is y-axis, right? Tilt's when you do this. Yeah. We're just like, like you're saying no, or rotating the head 15 degrees. Okay. Angle to 15 degrees, call dad. <coughs> also, make sure you know it's between the Schuler and the Law. They have been asking questions on that lately on the registry and the review guides. Schuler versus Law. The biggest difference is that true lateral versus the head rotation. Not tilt. Not tilt. Rotation. An angulation. Yes. Slightly different angulation. Yes. So 15 degrees call dad. That's going to exit through the TMJ closer to the IR, which is also the TMJ of interest. We're going to enter approximately half an inch superior to the upside EAM. So centering is a little different in that we're not going to be anterior. We're just going to be superior. One and a half inches to the EAM. 
Well, there it goes. Ooh. At least we'll make it through the TMJs. All right. Five by five, collimation field, very small area of interest once again. And as you can see, this is why I don't like doing this position. It's a lot more complicated. Schuler's gonna be a little bit more easier on you if you get one of these. Both show just as well in my opinion, but it's a personal preference which one you want to utilize. Did the previous, did it say anterior or superior? Yeah, it was anterior and superior on the previous one. So yes, a 0.5 anterior. Line. Hmm? That's for centering to the IR, but this is like centering to the actual part of the central ray. So your central ray is going to enter four and a half inches above or superior to the upside of the AO. Keep these in mind, they might be on that quiz bowl thing we're having for you guys on Friday, the student fee. Which, you can all, which you're all supposed to participate in as well. Remember so, that, Monty. They throw some of these obscure things in there. That wasn't Thursday? It's on Friday. It's on Friday. It's on Friday. That's, that's the trivia night, which it might be on the trivia night, too. Okay. Which I want you guys representing well on the trivia night. What are the prizes? Five person teams, by the way. We do some good wow. teams together. They're giving prizes away. I found what are they? I don't know what the prizes are. It's, it's, sponsored, it's, it's sponsored by Shimatsu. It's going to be some pretty good stuff. Shibatsu has got some money, so. <laughs> All right, guys, let's wrap this up. So what are we looking at? Condyles and necks of the mandible. For our open mouth, we're going to look at the mandibular fossa and inferior anterior excursion of the condyle. It's really interesting when we're looking at that condyloid process. Closed mouth, we're looking for any fractures of the neck and the condyle of the ramus. We're looking at a closed mouth view right here. Condyle joints and you'll see when we open the mouth once again it's going to go forward there's the EAL there's a tight collimation there that circular collimation old film x-ray again and they need to update their pictures course evaluation criteria, we're looking to the TMJ articulation, check the integrity of that joint. When we're looking at closed mouth, and I should have these red again, guys, make sure you highlight those two points. Condyle is going to be in the fossa in the closed mouth. It's going to be more anterior, or as we say, inferior to the articular tubercle in open mouth, but that's a fancy way of saying that it's going to move anterior once again, just like the previous view we looked at, as you can see. sanity in there today. I know y'all need to study as well. So all we have left